All television and radio stations in the United States will now cease their regular programming. Around 7 a.m. Eastern Time, a distributed denial-of-service attack was launched against Dyne, a Manchester, New Hampshire company that provides domain name system resolution services for dozens of companies, many of them household names. Dyne's customers weren't directly affected, but people wishing to use those sites or services couldn't reach them. We don't yet know who mounted the attack on Dyne or how exactly it was carried out, but there are two worst-case scenarios. It may have been Russian state-sponsored attackers staging a dry run for a more widespread attack on Election Day, or it may have been apolitical hackers testing out a botnet made up of thousands of infected Internet of Things devices, such as security cameras, home wireless routers, and smart TVs. Estonia suffered similar disruptions caused by Russian hackers in 2007, and the country of Georgia did as well during a brief war with Russia in the summer of 2008. Such an attack on the United States would fit most people's definition of cyber war, and the U.S. would have no choice but to respond in kind. And then there's this article from yesterday from Zero Hedge, third wave of internet cyber attacks launched, Dine warns. After two major allegedly cyber attacks targeted a little-known internet infrastructure company, Dyne, earlier today disrupting access to dozens of websites on Friday and preventing some users from accessing PayPal, Twitter, and Spotify, moments ago the DNS service provider said that a third attack has been launched. Internet domain name service provider Dyne says it is defending against a third wave of complex attacks, and this is from yesterday, 4.45 p.m., October 21st. Dyne says attack being waged from devices infected with malware coming from tens of millions of IP addresses around the globe. The source of the millions of malware attacks are so-called smart products or everyday products around the house which are hooked up to the internet. So while it may be difficult to pin this particular attack on Putin, Though we are sure the 17 agencies will try, one can blame their smart toaster, smart light bulb, and smart toilet for making Twitter inaccessible. As Reuters also adds, it was not immediately clear who was responsible for the outages that began in the eastern United States and then spread to other parts of the country and Western Europe. U.S. officials told Reuters that the U.S. Department of Homeland Security and the FBI were investigating the disruptions come at a time of unprecedented fears about the cyber threat in the United States where hackers have breached political organizations and election agencies. Remember this article from the Wall Street Journal earlier this year when the Obama administration announced its plan to give up U.S. protection of the Internet? It promised the U.N. would never take control. But because of the administration's naivete or ignorance, U.N. control is the likely result if the U.S. gives up Internet stewardship as planned at midnight on September 30th, 2016. And with the United Nations involved, this brings up the seven trumpets of the Book of Revelation. The first trumpet having sounded in 1830, in my opinion, that was the educational dynasty, the hidden dynasty of education, followed in 1913 by the Federal Reserve. That's the second trumpet, the hidden dynasty of economics. And then after the first two world wars, we had the UN in 1945. That's the third trumpet, the political, followed by 1948 when the state of Israel was recognized, Kenite occupied Israel, setting the stage for Satan to appear as the false Christ at the sixth trumpet, but 1948 was only the fourth trumpet in my opinion. After that, you had 1969, the fifth trumpet sounded, which we are now in when the Apollo 11 space mission transpired. And what does that have to do with all this? Well, think about it. Russia and the United States, Esau and Jacob, they have to come to an agreement for there to be a one world political system at the woe of the fifth trumpet. That's when Satan and his angels are cast out of heaven unto the earth and the five months begins at the woe of the fifth trumpet. The one world political system will then emerge. But going back to 1969, 
When the fifth trumpet began to sound, five means grace in biblical numerics. We're in a time of the sealing of God's election, as you can read of in Revelation chapter 7. But as far as Apollo 11 is concerned, and you can read Revelation chapter 9 verse 11 and see Apollyon written there in verse 11, as well as the eagle that says, woe, 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 because of the voices of the three angels that are yet to sound, the woe of the fifth trumpet is yet future. So going to 1969 and the Apollo 11 space mission, what did this have to do with Russia? If Apollo 11's mission had lasted just eight days, the moonwalk was also the culmination of a wager that had been made eight years earlier, when a young Kennedy had decided to challenge Moscow's lead in the space race. And this is an article from 2012 called Apollo 11, A Giant Leap for Mankind and Cold War Rivalry. From Fizz.org, the Soviet Union had put a satellite into orbit in 1957, and in 1961, Yuri Gagarin became the first man in space. Moscow trumpeted its advance as a sign of communism's superiority over the Western model of liberal capitalism. When the Cold War foes locked in a nuclear standoff, the U.S. could not afford this slight to its technical expertise and economic strength. I believe that this nation should commit itself to achieving the goal before this decade is out of landing a man on the moon and returning him safely to the Earth, Kennedy declared. Thanks to NASA, its astronauts, and $25 billion, an estimated $115 billion in today's dollars, look how much the dollar has plummeted. He got his wish, and around 500 million television viewers around the world saw the Star Spangled Banner fly on the moon. In 1970, a few months after the lunar landing, Soviet dissident Andriy Sakharov wrote in an open letter to the Kremlin that America's ability to put a man on the moon proved the superiority of a democracy. And remember the famous catchphrase from the Apollo 11 space mission, the eagle has landed. And again, the last verse of Revelation chapter 8, an eagle flew through the midst of heaven saying, woe, woe, woe to the inhabitants of the earth by reason of the voices of the three angels which are yet to sound. The woe of the fifth trumpet being when Satan and his angels are cast from heaven unto the earth, they are Daniel's fourth beast. That's the supernatural part of it. Also, you have the lion, which are the Christian nations. Then you have the bear, Russia, and the non-Christian nations, along with Ishmael. Remember that Esau married one of the daughters of Ishmael in the book of Genesis. Then you have the Kenites, the leopard, and the four hidden dynasties of education, economics, politics, and religion. So what you see going on now between the United States and Russia... Jacob and Esau, that is to say, is the wars and rumors of war stage that Christ warned us of in Mark 13. You'll hear of wars and rumors of wars. Don't worry about it. Be ye not troubled, for such things must needs be, but the end is not yet. The end will come with a one world political system, world peace, when Satan and his angels are cast from heaven unto the earth at the woe of the fifth trumpet. Then that one world political system receives a deadly wound, as it's written in Revelation 13, and then Satan appears in Jerusalem as the false Christ, having already been here two and a half months prior to that, causing the one world political system to emerge. Remember in Revelation 13, it says the dragon gave the first beast, the political beast, his power and his seat and great authority. But then it's wounded to death. Underline that word seat. It's thronos in the Greek, and you'll see it in Revelation 16 as well, in the fifth vial, which is the deadly wound. It's poured out upon the seat of the beast, and his kingdom was filled with darkness. That's the deadly wound. And then Satan appears at the sixth seal, the sixth trumpet, and the sixth vial which comes immediately after the fifth vial, which is the deadly wound. So we're in 555 right now. The fifth trumpet, as I said, is sounding, but five means grace in biblical numerics. It's the time of sealing the servants of God in their forehead with the truth of God's word. And the fifth seal concerns God's election, as you can read for yourself in Mark 13 and Matthew 24. It concerns being delivered up. It's the information that that will happen to those who stand against the false Christ, but he doesn't appear until 666. So we're in 555, fifth trumpet, fifth seal, 
and Fifth Vile, the events leading up to that deadly wound to the one world political system are in motion right now with the anti-establishment sentiment that's going on in the world right now and gaining traction more and more every day. Once that deadly wound transpires, we go from 555 to 666, and you'll know when we're in 666 when you see the abomination of desolation stand in Jerusalem, Satan himself appearing in Jerusalem, claiming to be Christ returned. He's supernatural, and he'll be performing miracles. You can't miss it. The Antichrist is not a human. It's Satan himself, the son of perdition, the only one sentenced to perish by name. Then, immediately after the tribulation of those days, after this five-month-long hour of temptation, the true Christ returns at the seventh trumpet, the seventh vial, and within the time frame of the seventh seal. So again, we're in the wars and rumors of war stage of this. Be ye not troubled, for such things must needs be. But the end is not yet. It's not until this one-world political system finally emerges at the beginning of the five months, at the woe of the fifth trumpet. So there you have it, and as Christ said in the last verse of Mark chapter 13, what I say unto you, I say unto all, watch.